This video is not on my scheduled plan of getting videos out. Uh, that's actually um, primarily the Bukitamanga videos. However, based on some emails, some comments that I got, there's a little panic going on, and I wanted to clear it up. As happens from time to time, somebody will put a video out with bad information, and this has happened yet again. And it's sad when it's about Visa because people really count on getting good information. And uh, the only thing I can tell you is just because it's in a video doesn't mean it's real. Uh, that includes mine. Verify everything that I say. But I try to do my homework. Today I'm going to talk about the retirement visa. I'm not going to talk about any other kind of visa. But I'm going to talk about the retirement visa because this is primarily the issue. First of all, there is no new law. It's not harder to get a visa. You don't have people getting turned down left and right unless they're not providing the information that they're supposed to provide. Now, the difference comes in is that to get a visa in the past, you didn't have to provide everything that was actually in the law. It was kind of nice. It was pretty simple. Still is. But now they're enforcing a law. And why are they enforcing the law? Because their budget is really in a bind. And what they're doing is picking up extra money for the healthcare system by enforcing the law. So let me go through this. What you need to get your visa, first of all, you got to have a passport. It's got to be within six months prior to it expiring. Second, you need a couple passport photos. Third, when it comes to retirement, that's what we're talking about. All you need is a download copy of your Social Security. If you go in there, you can uh, see the benefits. You can download a copy. It doesn't have to be certified, apostilled. Just download the copy. Now, if you're not retiring on Social Security, then whatever uh, verifiable funds you're going to have to have a record of that. Now, they are requiring the past six months of your bank records. Always been in the law. They just didn't bother with it. They're also requiring proof of medical insurance. This is not new, but again, they just kind of blew it off. So if you're getting your visa for the first time, then you need to obtain medical insurance. Once you have your visa, and you get your cedula, that, and both of those only take a matter of days, a couple of weeks and you got them both. You can then ap apply, which means get the EPS insurance. That's insurance that everybody, it's a mandatory insurance. It has always been. They Again, they just never uh, called out anybody on it. Now here's where the perceived changes come in. One is the bank statements. It's been in the law, but they they didn't require it. And two, it's they're verifying that you're paying the full price of the EPS. See, what happened is because nobody cared about any of this before, even though it's in the law, is there's a formula that you're supposed to pay. What happened is you go to your the EPS and they just automatically gave you the basic amount. They didn't bother requiring that you bring in proof of uh, your retirement funds. And that basic amount, it, it depending on the dollar and where it's at, we'll say about $40 a month. By requiring the past six months of your bank statements where your retirement funds are deposited, they, they are verifying that. And from that, you are then required to pay this formula. So if the if the amount is let's say the average retirement amount is thirteen fifty I believe so we're going to use that figure thirteen fifty a month you take forty percent of that and when you get forty percent of that you then multiply it times twelve point five percent and that will be the amount that you have to pay into EPS and for um, the thirteen fifty a month that works out to about $67 a month. So it's still very cheap, but it has gone up some. Now for some people who report everything in the world, 
their their social security, other pensions, other savings, they get banks here in Columbia, all of that goes on the table, then it can run your insurance up $100, $200 a month. So I'm going to give you some free advice here. Take it for what it's worth. First of all, what you probably want to do if you're going to be living here is cancel the uh, charge amount of your Medicare. That hundred and some dollars being deducted every month is something that you cannot use living here. So cancel it. It's not that hard to do. It does take a couple months if you do it from here. Second of all, make sure that your bank account is in your home country. So if most viewers here are from the United States, you want to make sure that your bank account in the United States. Best ones to have, uh, and this is by everyone's account that I can see, but also personal experience, you want to have either Capital One or Schwab, or both, and I'll get to that. What you want to have is a bank account that is solely dedicated to your retirement fund. So if it's Social Security, that. If you have other savings, other funds, whatever, do not pass it through there. Do not pass it through a Colombian bank because then you become obligated for taxes, for all kinds of expenses. If it remains in a U.S. bank, then you are not because it has nothing to do with uh, processing it through Colombia. Some people will tell you that's cheating, but it's not cheating because these funds are actually shouldn't even be taxable because they've already been taxed. This is not income. This is the equivalent of savings account. So rather than get into any kind of that pissing contest, if it's not here and recordable, then there's nothing to talk about. I'll give you an example, um, a real life example, and I'll use me for an example. Now, I have my retirement funds, not a whole lot, not, not quite the 1350. So everything's fine there. But I do receive money from the YouTube channel. Uh, not so much from YouTube itself, but from contributions, from other things that go on when I meet with clients, Skype calls, things like that. Here in Colombia, that would show as an income. Now, in the U.S., where all this money is processed, then I'm subject to the IRS there, correct? Yes. But with the IRS, what I'm able to do is show the expenses. And what happens almost every month is I'll break even or lose money. And then occasionally, if I get a big contribution or something, then I might pick up a hundred bucks or so beyond the expenses. So that's pretty you know, legit. And so when it goes through you know, the IRS situation, it, it's a non-taxable thing because I've got expenses that uh, defray it and it doesn't interfere with my retirement funds. But here in Columbia, they wouldn't be looking at the expenses, they're only looking at that money. So if that money comes into that bank account and it shows every month that say I was getting $1,800, they're gonna view that as I'm receiving $1,800. When in reality, it's less than the 1350 because of the expenses. So you don't wanna be stupid about things like that. Uh, you know, I, I have no problem with following the law, but there's no reason to squander money when it's not even money that you earned. And so you may have similar situations. You may have a, a 401k on top of a social security. That's, that's a saving. So keep that separate. So what I have is Capital One for anything to do with the channel and then a Schwab account where only retirement funds go. So when it comes time to show the six month uh, bank statements, I will show this, the Schwab, which shows the Social Security, which matches what the document says my benefits are, are. And that solves all those problems. Now, when it comes to the EPS or your health care, you say, yes, it did go up. And we're talking uh, 20 to $30 uh, for a person on average. And yeah, you never want to have it go up. But keep this in mind. I went back and over the past two years, the cost of living increases actually amounted to cover that. Uh, so that, you know, that's, that's a way to look at it. 
Now, it does appear that the dollar is going down, and so some of the benefits are going to start fading away. But, you know, it, you want to you always want to take that into account. I certainly did. For quite a while, as it drops down, uh, you know, I'm still fine. What are the costs of a retirement visa? Well, I'll tell you what it is through the office that I work with. The embassy, and they take care of all this. You don't have to go to Bogota. You just drop everything to the office to them, and they handle it. They take it to the U.S. Embassy who will verify your Social Security or retirement funds or whatever you need. That's why you don't need to have it certified or apostille. It's handled. You don't even have to deal with it. The second thing is the Colombian visa itself, and that costs $230. So you got $282, and it's best to cover those in U.S. funds. Then you have the cost of the service itself. And the office that I use, they apologized. It did go up a little because there's a little more processing with the bank statements. It went up almost nothing. It's 400,000 uh, Colombian pesos, which as of today amounts to about $110. So it's, under, it's still under $500 and you're good to go. So that's my best advice. That's, that's what's happening here. It's it's new that they're asking for those things, but it's not new as a new law. Last thing I will tell you is it seems the most confusion are coming out of people that are using immigration lawyers. It's because they're not as tied to the process as these immigration offices that are just basically every day, every day of the week, they're in the offices processing these things. And the lawyers seem to be a step removed because they don't seem to be up on things as much as the actual people that are processing the, the immigration visas. You may want to look at an immigration office like, like I'm using and I've used in the past over a lawyer. I'm not telling you that you know lawyers are bad or whatever. I'm not telling you that. But it does seem, the feedback I get from a lot of people that I talk to is they tend to overcomplicate things and not be fully aware of what's actually required. And they might have you over, uh, over provide information that uh, is really of no import here in Colombia and can only hurt you. So you keep in mind, only provide what you're required to provide and don't require extra. Don't get yourself a bank here in Colombia. There's absolutely no need for it. If you have a retirement visa, then you're not going to be running uh, a business and have a requirement for a local bank. And that's one of the few times that you would actually need a local bank. So it's the best advice I got as far as getting the visa the first time or renewing it. A little bit different, but it's always been there and it's actually not that big a deal. So that's what I got. Hope it helps. See you next time.